I want to take some time in this broadcast to talk to you about your thoughts. Let's talk about your thoughts for a bit. And I want to talk about spiritual warfare, but also the fear factor. And I want to bring some perspective to what many people are facing and what many people are going through. I work diligently to allow God to heal my own journey and how I think and how I see things and how I process my emotions and my thought world. And it's a passion of mine to help others in the same way. Now, what I emphasize quite often is helping people to realize that when it comes to your thinking, there is a war going on, a spiritual war. You can't see it with your five physical senses necessarily, but you can sense it. You can sense the battle and the war that's going on by the thoughts, imaginations, and belief systems that happen. And they hit us in various ways. And there are many people in the Christian stream of faith that when you talk to them about the spiritual battle, it's not really a part of their grid. You know, as far as the enemy or those kind of concepts, out of sight, out of mind is kind of their theology. And I, I, I understand some of their viewpoints and it's all right. Then there are those who make a lot of room for understanding that we are in a battle, we are in a war, but they can also get into a lot of fear-based thinking and a lot of even what I'm going to say is superstitious thinking about how the devil impacts us, how evil spirits can give us thoughts, but it doesn't negate whichever side you find yourself on. It doesn't negate the reality that we are in a war. Paul, the apostle, mentioned in Ephesians, we wrestle, we're wrestling. We wrestle not against other human beings, flesh and blood, people, humans. So the war is not with your father-in-law, with your mother. It's not with that person who hurt you. Your real war and battle is invisible. And the war is over what predominant thoughts will have your attention We'll have your focus, we'll have your embracing, we'll have your investment, what will infect your belief systems and so forth. That's the war. If we wanted to really understand the workings, the daily workings of how spiritual warfare works, it's the tension and battle over the belief systems of you and I. So you're not my enemy. As a human being, you're not my enemy. Now, there may be wars going on and thoughts that influence you that may want to work against me, but you're still not my enemy. I also want to take it a step further. You're not your own worst enemy, even though you may be conditioned to think you are. You have an enemy. The enemy is not you. But I, I want to get to something deeper in this because my point here is not to try to convince anyone about the spiritual battles that they face. The thing that happens in spiritual warfare is when we read it in scripture, we read about wrestling, we read about the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds, right? Second Corinthians, that Paul speaks about casting down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought, right? There's a lot of these verses that Satan walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Be steadfast, right? There's a lot of military style terminology that's used. But the thing that I want people to understand is many times when they're fighting their spiritual battles, they're fighting them from a place of fear and not a place of confidence. In the scriptural, in the scriptural application, of spiritual warfare thoughts and all that kind of stuff. It was never meant that you and I should do that from a place of fear. And I'm going to explain what that looks like in our life and in our journey. It was never meant to be from a place of nervousness and anxiousness, but from a position of a confident soldier. And there's a big difference because most of us are operating from our thoughts from a fear-based perspective. And when fear gets the upper hand in our thoughts, it is a tough day. Because that fear now creates the meaning, the interpretation. It now dictates our response, how we respond, how we react. Soldiers are not (laughs) confident soldiers, I should say. When the Bible talks about soldiers, you're a soldier armed with the eternal tools of the new covenant where God has already won the victory, but it's being applied 
in your growing, your healing, and your maturing. How does a, how does a soldier walk confidently? Because, see, when you understand soldiers, many don't understand a soldier's life. Because a soldier has confidence through really two main areas. The two areas are, number one, through training. A soldier has been effectively trained how to deal with resistance, how to deal with many different types of scenarios, how to condition himself in the training to be prepared. That's why they have things like boot camps and and certain very, very immersed times of training to develop the focus, develop the conditioning. And see, what our battles reveal in our thoughts is we haven't been trained. We haven't been prepared for battle. So we're thrown into the war and we're drowning because soldiers don't go to war without training. They must be trained. And many times they will immerse the soldier in the training in situations that in a lot of ways are more difficult than what they will experience. They push them, challenge them so that they become familiar on how to deal with resistance. You and I in our journey have not been trained on how to deal with resistance effectively. So when our thoughts come, when these thoughts come by that create a lot of disturbance in us or fear in us, we respond from a fear insecurity basis and not a confidence of training because we've not been equipped. So therefore, our response is, God, take this away. How do I get rid of this? We want to avoid the pain. We want to avoid discomfort. We want to avoid any sense of building up our capacity for resistance. So that's why many people, when they have mental health problems, they react in panic. Somebody help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. They write an email, make a phone call. They don't realize they actually need to enter into new levels of training. When you have these fearful responses to all these thoughts, remember the Bible says God's not giving you a spirit of fear. So this stuff is not coming from God, but there can be aspects of the war hitting you, but you're not equipped to face discomfort. We avoid discomfort at any path. And our current generations are very much programmed to try to alleviate any sense of discomfort. And what I learned and discovered is instead of running, God rescue me, running away, avoiding, avoiding, I'm going to step in and learn how to be trained. I'm going to go through basic training. Now, the thing that happens is when I present this to people, they say, I don't want, I don't know if I want to do that. Okay. You're in a war. There's no choice. You're in a battle. Jesus already paid the price. But in your journey, we are learning to practice in our training, developing the confidence. Confidence doesn't just arrive to you and all of a sudden you're just confident. In fact, most of us have been in situations where we lack confidence. We're so insecure, so broken. We have rejection issues. We have insecurity issues. We have all these things going on that hit us and hit us and hit us. Then we have these fearful interpretation of our thoughts, right? They hit us. And then some of you have intrusive thoughts that come in. You have these 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 ways that you look at your thoughts and they're fear based. And when fear gets the upper hand, it now compromises a soldier's ability. Number one, a soldier develops confidence through training. Number two, the soldier develops confidence through the culture of people he's bonded with. There's a confidence in his commander that the orders will be clear, that there will be order to the flow of what's happening. The soldier relies on the system that is at work all the way to the top, that there is going to be a clarity, a confidence, and a strategy that's happening. Now, the soldier doesn't know the full strategy, doesn't know everything. He just kind of knows where he's at, what's going on with him, and the next step. That's all he needs to know. He also develops a bond and connection and confidence with the band of brothers, with those around him that help to bring about that, the power of loving connection. In fact, many, many soldiers, when they get out of war and they come back home, one of the greatest things that they miss is that constant camaraderie they had with their fellow soldiers. And this plays to you and I, when you're fighting, what you need is you need confidence in the source. Your Father in heaven, the work of Christ that's given to you by grace. You don't have to strive for it, but you need to be able to stand. And you and I need to learn resilience and tenacity. I realized in the spiritual gym of my life is that my muscles had a lot of atrophy to them. 
I had the spiritual muscles. They weren't activated. Do you ever find that if you don't use a muscle in your physical body for a certain amount of time, it gets weak, right? Does it mean you don't have the muscle? No, it just hasn't been activated. You have in, you, in your life the fruit of the Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the keys of the kingdom, but those things have to be activated, learned, conditioned, trained, exercise. In the Hebrew writing, the Bible talks about those who are of full age, they become mature. They've learned to exercise their senses. They've learned to work out those muscles. See, the war hits us, and what it shows us is we need training. Nope, you don't need 911. You don't need rescue. You don't need a magic prayer. You don't need someone to give you the magic formula. What you need is you need exercise to develop your emotional new patterns. Now, this isn't about trying harder. This isn't about adding pressure. Nope. Soldiers do not win from pressure, activating constant pressure. They'll be stressed out by the end of the day. They'll be exhausted. No, they learn to operate from confidence. They learn to activate and use their resources for what is at hand and not waste it on stress. One of the fascinating things to study about soldiers, and I've read this, and you could find this in your own research too. When soldiers, especially the highly trained soldiers, when they are standby, they have a certain um, blood pressure, heart rate, and all that. When they are told it is time to go to war, the signal, it's time. Commander said it, it's time to go to war. There's a fascinating thing where their blood pressure can actually lower. How does that come about? Through training. Because for every one of us who don't have training, our blood pressure, our blood rate would rise. Our heart rate would rise. There'd be tension, right? Stress response all throughout the body. You can't last that long, right? Until exhaustion starts to hit in. Soldiers have learned they have to be trained in such a way that they are actually calm in the midst of battle. How many of you and I, when stuff hits our life, we go into calm? <laughs> Most of us honest people, honest people, would say, oh, we go into stress, we go into all these, go into all these patterns. So, so you have to understand the context of thought and spiritual warfare. That's why I teach so much on the need for God to heal you in love, because it is the love of the Father that helps cast out fear. So many of you battle and struggle in your thoughts because you're afraid of your thoughts. The more you are afraid of your thoughts, the more you will give the thoughts power. You'll even get to the point where you're afraid of yourself. And now your lifestyle can become avoiding certain thoughts, avoiding certain patterns. When God wants to lead you to a place of learning how to stand. In fact, one of the most powerful postures in the Bible in spiritual warfare is not, you know, hours and hours of repentance or all this stuff, all these hula hoops you got to jump through. One of the most powerful places is in Ephesians 6, where it says, when you've done all to stand, just stand. Develop that ability to let your root system grow deep. And many of you, you're panicking and you, you react out of panic to your thoughts. And you might be looking for some magical treatment or some magical thing to just make this all go away. Many of you respond to these thoughts and you start arguing with them, arguing with them, debating back, and you're rationalizing and you're engaging it. And all you're doing is magnifying the enemy's megaphone. I'll take it further into the illustration. The way that you defeat the bully, a bully in your life, because many of you have thoughts in your life that bully you, is to no longer keep feeding it. I use this illustration with people that I coach. Imagine that I was to drive out of my driveway and go down the street. And as I'm driving out the street, somebody, one of my neighbors, stands there, he's waiting for me, and he yells with a megaphone, you know, Mark is a terrible person. He's a terrible father, terrible husband. He's yelling it in the megaphone. Now, my initial response may be roll down the window, go, hey, what's going on, man? What's, what's, what's your deal, right? That's often a very natural response in how we deal with things. And in many ways, that's how you deal with your thoughts. You go, hey, whoa, what's this thought? Oh my, oh, what am I gonna do? We, we, we start to go into fight or flight, we start to panic, right? 
It's understandable. That's usually like a first round response. We argue and you may say something back to the thought, maybe even have a scripture back to the thought, or maybe you say something to defend yourself or rationalize or whatever. But we all know in the long term, if every day I drive out of my driveway and that guy with the megaphone screaming that, if I keep fighting and fighting and fighting with him, what's it going to do? It's going to empower his voice. Now, we know the best solution is probably to ignore him and then maybe call the police, right? But to not keep feeding it. You see, what happens is we feed our thoughts because we're afraid of them. And we're afraid of the thoughts because of the meaning we give them. And the meaning we give our thoughts is fear-based. Oh, no. Oh, no. What's going to happen? happen? Fear has infected so much of the church, we don't even know which way to look. That's, the Bible has told us hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Somewhere from, what is it? I, I've even read that the Bible says fear not at least 365 times. So that gives, or three, maybe 366. That's enough for, for, for every day of the year, including a leap day year. <laughs> or however that works. <laughs> do not fear. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Why is God, is he a broken record? Why does he keep saying this? Why does he keep saying, don't be afraid? Because he knows you and I will spend a lot of our journey undoing the fear factor in my life. That's why I'm so passionate about writing about that and helping people. And I wrote a book entitled, I Will Not Fear. And I'm I'm grateful that I responded to the times I lived in when I first began to write this because it was preparing me and the people of God who are willing and listening. And, and, are, and are responding to God's call to be overcomers, to learn to identify the fear factor and break themselves free and, and, and see how much fear has influenced our life and how much it's influenced our journey. And so I, I came to a great awareness, whether it was depression, anxiety, panic attacks, OCD, our relational goofiness, the areas and in insecurity, emotional problems. So much of it was dominated by fear. I had to learn how to stand. I had to learn how to not feed the bully. I had to learn to stop the rescue me panic kind of responses. Many times when people write to me, they'll say, Mark, I need help. Words like desperation. I'm desperate for help. I'm at the end of my rope. I don't know what else to do. I understand that because people are exhausted. They're weary. But that signal is showing your intensity is is how you're responding to these thoughts. And what you need is a more nurturing confidence. You need confidence through training, and you need confidence through connecting a bond to who God is in your life and connecting to healthy relationships around you to be the effective soldier that God's called you to be. Trying to be a soldier apart from the love of God and the confidence developed in training, goodness, really, really challenging. Sometimes we yell at our thoughts, right? We yell at them. We go, you know go away, or, or, or we try to, I plead the blood, or we, we yell things at them, right? It's understandable. But do you know many times when we yell at those things, a trained soldier doesn't just react to everyone. You ever seen those pictures of video clips where somebody is saying something harassing to a soldier and the soldier's standing guard and the soldier's locked stand forward because he knows if he feeds the person that's yelling at him, he now empowers them. And for many of us, we empower the enemy because we feed the thought, we give attention to it. Whatever thought gets attention will grow. Whatever thought is stimulated will grow. And fear is one of the greatest activators that causes us to stimulate the thought because we do one of two things. We, we focus on it so much, we spin, 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 the thought grows, or we spend so much time avoiding, 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 you know, escaping. What's that called? Fight or flight. Fight, gear up. Ah! Or flight. I got to get out of here. I hope that thought doesn't come. Thought go away, right? Which do you fall into? Or do you do both? God is wanting us to be free from both of them. Instead, we stand in the midst of it. We don't run and hide. We don't freak out. Everybody stay calm. That is what God is building in you. And the natural question I know many of you ask is, how do I do that? We're always asking that. How, 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 how? Well, first get the heart of what I'm saying. Because many people ask the how, but they're not getting the heart. The heart of what I'm saying. Because the how will be meaningless if you don't get the heart of what I'm saying. 
The heart of what I'm saying is God wants to build a confident soldier in the midst of your battles. He's not going to take them away. He's not going to rescue them away from your life. He wants to build a soldier in you based on being sons and daughters. That's our secret weapon. That's how you fight. You fight from sonship. You don't fight from slavery. And God is setting his church free from spiritual slavery. Because in our spiritual slavery, we panic. Where's God? What's he doing? Oh no, what did I do wrong? What do I need to do? We go to panic responses. And we respond in fear. And many of you need to realize, you through practice. So Mark, how? Through practice. The thought comes, and you start panicking over it. And you go, nope, nope, no. Nope. I need to be more nurturing in my thoughts. I need to learn. Oh, but I'm anxious. I'm anxious. What do I do about the anxiety? What do I do about the anxiety? Stand. Stand. Stand, soldier. But Mark, I got this. Stand. 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 Steady. Steady. What am I showing you? The voice of confident nurture of our father. I got you. But God, I need you back. No, no, no. I'm here. I'm here. I didn't leave. I'm here. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. That's fear. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. What if, what if, what if, what if. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. What if, yeah, but, what if. Yeah, but, yeah, but, what if. That's the language of fear. What if, what about, what if I. Fear, 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 fear. Feel that, feel that. What if, what if, what if. Then double-mindedness. I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. Focus. Stand. Stand, soldier. I don't know. I don't think I can do that. Yeah, that's how we, that's how we usually approach training. We don't want it. We don't think we're up for the challenge. That's how broken our hearts are in need of love. I want to pray that the fear of your thoughts, the fear of what the thoughts are saying, would layer by layer be broken off of your life. And many of you are exhausting yourself with all the, the spinning you do over your thoughts, and you're constantly repenting or doing this or trying to jump through hula hoops to fix your thoughts. And all you need to do instead of trying to fix them all or responding in fear is create a new pathway. I'm going to learn to stand. Yes, the anxiety is rising up, but I will not feed this thought anymore. And when I learned to start doing that, I started to become a soldier to walk towards the battle instead of running away from it or just getting lost in my anxious reactions. Some of you get superstitious about things. And so you're afraid. And maybe I walked by that person and their thoughts jumped on me. And I found many, many believers are actually very, very superstitious. It's not grounded in the new covenant and the power of greater is he that's within us, the tea that's in the world. We're very superstitious in how we pray about things and how we think thoughts happen. And maybe this thought happened because I talked to this person and the, all these distorted meanings and interpretations. So we're, let, let's bring this to application. Number one, God is not trying to use fear to talk to you. Let's just establish that right up front. Number two, fear is not God's design for you to live by. Now, you have fear issues in your life? Everyone does. Everyone does. Everyone. God is leading us layer by layer to walk in freedom. You're on a journey of overcoming your fears. So it's time we lean into the battle and go, I just need some training. I just need some training. You mental health battles, emotional health battles, relationship battles, whatever it is. I just need some training. Because you in your thinking need to be trained. So I'm going to ask you, I don't care what issue you have, OCD, anxiety, panic, who trained you? Who trained you in how to deal with your thoughts? I'm waiting. I'm waiting because I know what the answer is. And who trained your thoughts? Nobody. Maybe some people yelled at you or just told you, stop thinking that way. They didn't nurture you as a soldier. See, it's not just, oh, you're loved and sit on the couch and everything's fine. It's no, you're loved. I got your back. You're an overcomer. But you don't have to strive in this. It's confidence. It's that rest. It's that place of God he's wanting to call us into. Yeah, Mark, I don't feel that at all. Right. You just need training. Say yes to the training. How do I do this? Practice. 
practice. Deathly afraid of public speaking. So bad that it made me nauseous where I would just want to throw up, lose my appetite so bad I'd be on the floor weeping. How'd I learn to overcome it? Practice. How'd I learn to overcome social anxiety? Practice. How'd I learn to overcome fear of what people think? Practice. How'd I learn to overcome anxiety? Practice. How'd I learn to overcome obsessive compulsive thoughts? Practice. 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 Mark, I applied what you told me last week. It's not working. Practice. Don't assess yourself on how well you're doing until you've practiced for a long time. Practice. Practice facing it. Practice facing and showing that this thought is no longer going to bully you anymore. Thoughts about your past. Stuff that accuses you. And you just lean into it and go, there it is. I'm no longer afraid of you anymore. I'm no longer going to hide. Because I'm a soldier who someone paid a price for me. And I'm fighting out of that place. And I'm learning how to wear my armor. And each day put it on so I know how to be equipped to deal with the thoughts that come my way. But I'm not going to be afraid anymore. If you want to take the next step in overcoming the fear factor, I think I Will Not Fear could be a really helpful resource. Because one of the things that's helped me so much in my life when it comes to thoughts and battles is this simple message. Mark, just don't be afraid. Now, I've taken, it's taken many, many years and, and learning, and I'm still in my process, and so are you. But I'm thankful of the ground I've been able to stand on and the greater firmness I've been able to apply. I have more to go. And I'm grateful that God's patient with me, and he loves me, and he has my back. But today I pray that you be released at a new level to learn how to respond to your thoughts with a loving response and learn to, over time, let the power of the bully be diminished because you're not going to be bullied around anymore. You're not going to be bullied around by your thoughts. If this broadcast has been a blessing to your life, take a moment to consider a one-time donation or become a regular supporter of these materials. Get a hold of I Will Not Fear. Share the message with your friends. Let it marinate in your own life and your own journey. And I look forward to empowering you in more episodes ahead. It's an honor to be your brother from another mother. I'll see you all next time. God bless you.